Hey, example problem time. What we're going to do is figure out the voltage across the capacitor, voltage across the resistor, and the current through, the, through those devices over a period of time when this switch closes. So basically what we're going to be doing is plugging in the resistor value, the capacitor value, the source voltage value into these equations, and then evaluating those equations at a number of different points in time. But before we jump into that, I want to point out something that keeps occurring over and over again in these equations. And that's this value, resistance times capacitance. And this resistance times capacitance is sometimes called tau, or the time constant for the circuit. And I'll show you why that is. Well, let's, let's look, use this example here. R times C for this example will be 1,000 ohms times 2.2 times 10 to the minus 6 farads. Okay, so as a number, 1,000 times 2.2 times 10 to the minus 6 is going to be 2.2 times 10 to the minus 3. Now what about the units for this? Well, ohms, if we break ohms down, that's going to be volts per amp. And if we break farads down, farads are charge per volt. Okay, so in these units, the volts will cancel out. And we get charge per volt, or charge per volt, charge per amp. And if we remember, break down what an amp is, it's charge per second. Those Q's cancel out, and what we end up with is simply the unit of seconds. So this tau, this R times C, is in units of seconds. And I'll speak a little bit more about the importance of tau at the end of this example, so stay tuned for that. Okay, we're going to figure out values for these different things, the voltages and currents, for a number of different times. So the times that we're going to figure out for will be at zero minus, and remember that's the instant before the switch closes, at zero plus, so that's the instant after the switch closes, and then we're going to figure it out at 2.2 milliseconds, 4.4 milliseconds, 6.6 .6 milliseconds, 8.8 .8 milliseconds, and then 11 milliseconds. And it's not a coincidence that I chose those numbers. Those are all multiples of tau. And we need to figure out for each one of these times, we'll actually figure out first e to the negative t over tau. And then we'll also figure out vc, vr, and ic for all of these different times. And really, it's just a matter of plugging the numbers into a calculator. Uh, except for in this case, the instant before the, the switch closes, well, the time constant is not applicable because we're not charging the capacitor there. The voltage across the capacitor starts at zero, the voltage across the resistor is zero, and the voltage uh, across the, or the current through the devices is also zero. At the instant the switch closes, this is time zero plus, and now these equations apply and E to the negative T over tau applies. So if T is zero, we put zero into that expression and we get E to the zero. So that value is simply going to be one. If we plug one, if we plug that into this expression, we have 1 minus 1 gives me 0. Vs times 0, of course, is going to be 0. So that's why we get 0 volts across the capacitor. The voltage across the resistor, well again, e to the negative t over rc is going to be equal to 1. So that'll be equal to Vs. But in this case, we actually know what Vs is. It's 12 volts. And ic, well again, this will be 1, will be 12 volts divided by 1,000 ohms. 12 over 1,000 gives me an IC of 12 milliamps. Of course, that's in volts. Now if we go to 2.2 milliseconds, we plug this 2.2 milliseconds into the expression here, we get 2.2 milliseconds over, again, 2.2 milliseconds. So now we're going to have E to the negative 1 is 0 0.368. VC will be that 12 volts times 1 minus 0 0.368. So that's 12 times 0 0.632 is 7.58 volts. VR will be 12 times 0 0.368, which is 4.42 volts. And then IC will be 4.42 volts over that 1,000 ohms, which is 4.42 milliamps. At t equals 4.4 milliseconds, we get 4.4 milliseconds over tau, over rc, of 2.2 milliseconds. So this will give me e to the negative 2. So e to the negative 2 
is 0 0.135. So that means for VC, we'll have 12 times 1 minus 0 0.135, which is 10.38 volts. For VR, we'll have 12 minus 0, or 12 times 0 0.135, which is 1.62 volts, which means we'll have the current of 1.62 milliamps. Then when we get up to 6.6 .6 milliamps, well, we have 6.6 .6 over the 2.2. So that means that this row on that next step for time is e to the negative 3. Is it 0 0.05? So that means for the VC, we'll have 12 times 1 minus 0 0.05, which works out to 11.4 volts. For VR, we'll have 12 times that 0 0.05. Without the rounding, we get 0 0.597 volts. And of course, that means 0 0.597 milliamps. The next step, we have eight, we're at 8.8 .8 milliseconds. So we have 8.8 .8 over 2.2. So that means we have e to the minus 4, which is 0 0.0183. So then what that means for VC is we'll have 12 times 1 minus 0 0.0183. Gives me 11.78 volts for the voltage across the capacitor, for the voltage across the resistor. And finally, on this last step here, we're at 11 milliseconds. 11 over 2.2 gives me 5. So we're, we are at e to the minus 5, which is 0 0.00673. Actually, with rounding, that should be 6.674. So that means we've got 12 times 1 minus e to the minus 5 for VC, which gets me up to 11.92 volts. For VR, it'll be 12 times e to the minus 5. And the current. OK, as time progressed, our voltage across the capacitor approaches 12 volts. The voltage across the resistor approaches 0 volts, as well as the current is also approaching 0 milliamps. And this gives you an idea of how the values change for the voltage across the capacitor, resistor, and then the current through those two devices. So we've only taken a snapshot at five different points, or I guess six different points in time if we include zero. But to really understand what this looks like and, and how we approach the 12 volts as we're charging the capacitor, and, and you can kind of see that as we get closer and closer to 12 volts, it takes more and more time, or you get less amount of charge onto the capacitor, less voltage change for every equivalent step of time. And to really see how this, uh, how this happens, it's a, really, it's a good idea to plot out these equations for our values of 1 kilo ohm and, and 2 microfarad, 2.2 microfarads. And you can see those graphs here for the voltage across the capacitor, the voltage across the resistor, and then the current through the devices. So you can see how that voltage across the capacitor rises and then it asymptotically approaches that 12 volts. It'll never actually mathematically get there. Same thing for the voltage across the resistor. It's asymptotically approaching zero volts, but it'll never actually mathematically get there. Now I want to talk a little bit more about this value of tau. For this circuit, we see that we've seen the shape of these three different equations. And regardless of the value of the R and the C, the shape of those equations is going to be the exact same. What's going to change is the tau value, so those resistor, resistor and capacitor change values, the tau changes. And what that means is that the time to charge is changing. The shape stays the same, but the amount of time to charge changes. And for any value of tau, this ratio of t over tau is the important thing to consider. When that ratio t over tau is equal to 1, the voltage across the capacitor is going to be at 63.2% of fully charged. When that t over tau is equal to 2, the voltage across the capacitor is going to be at 86.5% fully charged. When t over tau equals 3, we'll be at 95% charged. When t over tau equals 4, we're getting up to 98.1% charged. And finally, when t over tau equals 5, well, this is not actually finally. Time goes on after, after that. But our charge our capacitor is at about 99% charged, actually more like 99.3% charged. And I only went up to t over tau equals 5 because the commonly accepted convention is that once your time has reached 5 tau, 
so t over tau is equal to 5, you can consider your capacitor fully charged. Technically, it's not. Mathematically, it's not fully charged. You haven't actually reached that, that full charge yet. But the amount that needs to change, that 0.7%, that is so small we can ignore it. Uh, sometimes you may need to charge it a little bit further to, to, to consider it fully charged. But for the most part, this is, this is generally considered fully charged. And I mean, this has real consequences with, if you're measuring that voltage with a DMM. Once you get to 5 tau, your DMM may not be able to distinguish between 5 tau and 6 tau anyway. So if you want to see more videos on capacitors, including ones where I show you how to derive the voltage across the capacitor, voltage across the resistor, and the current through those two devices, then you can check out this playlist here. It'll have all of those videos that you want to see. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to get more videos like this in your inbox, hit subscribe. Thanks for spending your time here with me. And remember to keep learning and have fun.